Genexus X Evolution 3 incorporates the concept of base transaction. This makes it possible to explicitly indicate the name of the transaction whose associated physical table is to be run through, whether in a for each command, a data provider, or in the grid of a web panel. For transactions of more than one level, the name of the transaction can be indicated, followed by a period, and then the name of the level whose physical table is to be accessed as a base table. Its main purposes are as follows. To improve the expressive capacity, that is to say, when Genexus users think about a navigation, they already intend to navigate a certain base table. In this way, they can indicate and view this on reading the code. Also, to make it easier for Genexus to receive beforehand the base table to be navigated, instead of having to determine it. With the introduction of this concept, the defined by clause is considered as deprecated, and it's only kept for compatibility purposes. We recommend that the base transaction should always be referenced, because it's advantageous at all levels. In addition, once we get used to referencing it, it's very easy to do. Alright, so far so good. Let's go to Genexus to see, first of all, how to indicate the base transaction in the for each command. The speaker transaction has been defined. Also, we've created the procedure called speakers list, whose objective is to print the list of all speakers in alphabetical order in PDF format. So we open the source. We type for each. And right after the for each, we type the name of the transaction whose associated physical table we want to run through. So we type speaker. Since we want the speakers to be listed in alphabetical order, we add the corresponding order clause. Inside the for each, we include the print command and the name of the print block containing the speaker's attributes that we want to show. Note that all the attributes mentioned inside the foreach command belong to the extended table of the base table, speaker. It should be complied with in this way. That is to say, the table to run through is determined by the transaction name or level indicated next to the foreach command. The set of attributes included between foreach and n4 must belong to the extended table of the base table we want to run through. So it's clear that the base table of this foreach command is speaker. Now let's see another example in which the base transaction that we will indicate corresponds to the second level of a transaction. Note the structure of the session transaction. It defines the sessions and, for each session, the set of speakers. Now let's take a look at the procedure, speakers of one session, that has already been defined. In its PARM rule, it receives a session identifier, session ID. Now let's look at its source. From what's written next to the for each command, the base table being requested is clearly indicated. That is to say, the one associated with the second level of the session transaction. Now let's check that the attributes included in the print block belong to the extended table of the base table requested, so that the complete definition is correct. And we've confirmed that it's correct. That is to say, the speakers of the session received in a parameter will be printed. It's also possible to declare more than one base transaction. In this case, Genexus tries to make a join between the physical tables associated with the base transactions declared. If it can't do it, it'll find a Cartesian product between both physical tables. Even if it's inferred, because it is the only for each command, note that the result of the data intersection made, whether with a join or Cartesian product, will be shown in the same line. That is to say, the result will be a flat list. Now let's talk about the use of the base transaction concept in a data provider object. In data providers, the base transaction is declared preceded by the from clause. Let's see it with one practical example. The SDT speaker structure data type has been defined. The objective is to define variables of this type in an object 
and then be able to store a collection of speakers in memory. We also have defined the DP speakers data provider. The logic solves the loading of structures of SDT speakers type. To this source, we've dragged the SDT speaker structure data type, and almost all the syntax has been added automatically. In the source, we only have explicitly written the definition of the base transaction and the WHERE clause. So, note that immediately after the SDT name, we've typed FROM and the base transaction. In this way, we've indicated that the base table to be navigated is the physical table associated with the second level of the session transaction, which stores the speakers related to the sessions. In addition, we've defined one filter to have the speakers of a certain session received in a parameter loaded in memory. Just as we've seen for the for each command, the attributes present in the body of the data provider must belong to the extended table of the base table indicated by means of the base transaction concept. Lastly, let's look at the base transaction concept in web panels. Grid standard and grid freestyle controls offer the base TRN property that allows indicating the name of the transaction whose associated physical table is to be navigated, or transaction, period, level name. The attributes included in the grid must belong to the extended table of the base table indicated by means of the base transaction concept. This web panel, called WP Speakers, is to be used to display the sessions in which the speaker with speaker ID equals 3 participates. To this end, in the grid we've included the session ID and session title attributes, and in the base TRN property of the grid, we've entered session.speakers.